This has been a pirate production. How's it going, everybody? Today we got former child star Corey Danziger, book writer, of course, and of course, Sane Four co co founder yeah. and creator of Sane Four. So, what's going on today, Corey? Oh man, I'm so glad to join you, brother. I uh, I watched your your interview with Courtney Gaines. I thought you did such a great job, man. You've got a nice way about about handling an interview, man. I, I'm a fan. Well, I appreciate it, man. I've got my own little thing going with it. I said, yeah. you know what? I'm going to do it differently. I love so, it. So make it fun, interactive. Uh, so, yeah. And I'm working my way down the burbs right now, apparently. <laughs> okay, good. <And> so, <laughs> next up, uh, next you got to do... Uh, Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman. Oh, yes. And I've been seeing him on there. Hell, I just saw a picture with him and uh, uh, Mike Patton, the last one I saw of him. So I was like, I'm going to work into Mr. Bungle and Corey Feldman. Dream come true right there. That's right. Are you a, are you a Bungle fan? Love Bungle. I was trying to find my uh, um, Disco Volante shirt today. So couldn't Great. find it. So I went with the old Nexus Pirate. So I was like, man. Especially, I was going to represent Scott a little bit since he's now yeah. a newer member of Mister Bungle. So, right. uh, yep. Yeah. So with, uh, with Dave Lombardo, Dave Lombardo too. Yes. Yeah, we're we're uh, we do a lot of work with Dave, and he's one of my favorite people on the planet. Um, him and his wife. His wife is so cool. Her name's Paula, um, and they're just like this awesome, awesome couple. Um, I just love. I love them. Well, I imagine, man, uh, I've always loved him and and Scott and did to see him in this mix. So, <laughs> yeah, I thought Wrath, uh, uh, Wrath of the Easter Bunny, man, who better to do that thrash than Absolutely. those two? So, Absolutely. So, um, another thing, your books. Oh, yeah, that's right. No, oh, that's so cool that you got those. Hell yeah, brother. So cool, man. Thank you. Thank I you. read through these, found some interesting stuff out. Now, this title, how could you not read it with a title <laughs> like that? That's all I'm saying. That's so funny, man. Well, you know what? What's funny about the books is um, I wrote them during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I was stuck at home. And um, I just... I didn't know what to do. You know, we the musicians that we worked with at scene four were kind of all staying home. So we mm -hmm. didn't make artwork. So I just started thinking, you know, what could I do? So I started just writing and um, I quickly put those two together and I'm, I'm honored that you got them. So thank you. Hell yeah, dude. I, like I said, I've enjoyed them, get a lot of information out of them. And I, I could tell it was like, man, he was in a writing mood. Um, <laughs> Yeah, some good information in there, and uh, and it's got a lot of the background, especially during the filming of the Burbs stuff like that. Um, can I call you Ace? You can call me Ace. That's yeah, my name. there you go. Nickname. Yep, nickname uh, from Tom Hanks himself. When we were doing the Burbs, um, there were uh, Joe at the beginning of the shoot. We had a a powwow where we all read the script together, and. Uh, and we were going around the table and, and Joe said, uh, we got two Corys. What are we going to do? <laughs> uh, and I just, you know, my little 11 year old self raised my hand and said, you can call me Ace. <laughs> I don't even know how I came up with the name Ace, but somehow that sounded very uh, uh, diligent and, you know, yeah, I, I go get it, to go to work, you know, so. And then years later, it reprises itself, does it not? Yes, it does. It does. Um, yeah. In fact, uh, when we were about, uh, I went to uh, Disney for some meeting and I was walking away from uh, the meeting and I just hear, hey, Ace, <laughs> and I turn around and there's Tom Hanks. And he, you know, it's so funny because, you know, he's the biggest star in the world. And I was just 11 when we shot the film. 
And now I'm, you know, 16 or 17 years old. And he still from the back remembered me. Oh, yeah. And he thinks of me as ace. So that was that was pretty cool. Well, you know, you know, this movie gets more fans every year. I mean, it is a cult film. It's like I told Courtney, I said, you know, he was so surprised. He said, you know, because his Malachi character was so big. He said the one that grew on me the most from people was Hans from yeah. the Burbs. He said, such a cult film. And then, and then at the time, it's historical. That was when that, that big strike at the time, you know. Right. And y'all had that venue right there. It used to be the old Beaver House and the the Monsters, the old set That's of the right. Monsters. That's so right. it's a historical area. Y'all pretty much had the venue to yourselves. And, of course, great Joe Dante just coming off of Gremlins. That's right. You know, um, it's just a cult film. It's something I've introduced to my children. And there's, and of course, I told them you were going to be on here, and uh, they know you very well. Oh, and, that's uh, so cool. Then you're you're the kid eating the apple, usually. I'm the kid or, eating the apple. Or, uh, yeah, the nocturnal feeders. You know, that you're, you're synonymous with that on the fan site, which oh. I want to give a shout out to the fan site, the Burbs fan site, man. More and more people every day, I'm telling you. It, it's the best Facebook group on on facebook i mm -hmm. i go to it every day um i always can find a way to smile no matter how bad my day is going <laughs> if i look that page they're so funny the people on there are so funny and clever and nice um i've become friends with you i've become friends with i mean i've become friends with so many people from from the group um i just it's a it's a great pick me up and i know courtney's on the group too mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's been a, a, a great kind of addition to my life. I have to tell you real quickly, I am wearing these glasses, mm -hmm. um, not because I'm trying to look cool, but these are actually colorblind glasses. Really? I just bought these. Um, I'm color, very severely colorblind. I, I saw something on there about the, yeah. I, that, that, I don't know if it was a book interview or something, but you mentioned that. Yeah. And, and these glasses... Um, they want you to wear them as much as possible when you first get them because mm -hmm. apparently your eyes adjust to it. But I'm seeing color now for the first time in my life. Wow. It's, it's a trip. Dude. Yeah. So, <laughs> so don't think I'm trying to look cool. These are literally color oh, line glasses that are amazing. They're just a, a, a lifesaver. Well, it, it fits you though. I mean, I'm just saying it's kind of that. Thank you, brother. You know, uh, I was like, what's the Cordenziger thing, you know? So <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Oh, I, I get, you, yeah, I get uh, light blindness type from fluorescent lights. So okay. when I was in the military, I got prescribed sunglasses because I have very light sensitivity. So kind of understand not that, but my God, I never thought they'd have glasses for color blindness. It's, it's incredible. They, they really work. Um, and I'm just seeing everything so differently and every, I mean, literally I've been wearing them since I got them and every day it gets a little bit better. It's really weird. Right. So, um, I'm just enjoying it. You know, so well, man, uh, you got a whole art studio right there in front of you. Yeah. You, know, you get to enjoy the color. You know what That's I'm saying? Right. That's you right. Know? I mean, God said, brother. God said. Still early for me. I'm still sipping down my coffee okay <laughs> <laughs> but yeah and another thing now how when did you get started with saint four so um i met my partner robbie dosage who um was creating artwork with me with a clothing line mm -hmm. um called the original lefties we were doing um kind of these cool kind of heavy metal clothing line uh stuff that was in fred siegel and all these different stores across the u.s we started that in 2004 and started taking clients on to um to do like their design and their branding work him and i were right. working together. and at some point we just started making artwork with these kind of well-known rock musicians mm -hmm. and it just took off we we now publish over 50 different 
artists and work collaborate on making fine art with guitarists and drummers. And we've done Chuck D, we've done the RZA. We, mm -hmm. we bring them into the studio. We start working on a, 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 a concept. Right. And make an art collection with them. And the thing we're really known for is we um, we create abstract artwork with drummers through drummers through their movements. So they're using okay. these sticks where we're able to capture how they're playing and make these beautiful abstract pieces of art. And we mm -hmm. did it actually with guitarists. So like the piece behind you, that's a mm -hmm. Scott. Yeah, the surgical yeah. precision. Yeah, it, it's one of his best pieces. You you picked a great one, and he actually created this with us using this glove mm -hmm. that my best friend Chris Young built um, that chronicles their playing on the fretboard and makes a visual art piece. Wow. See, I was curious on the art. And I'm sure out of the playing, it's got that heart and that inspiration in it. As yeah. they're playing, this is what comes out of it. Am I right? That's 100%. It, 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 is, it is some God-given kind of thing that we're able to well see this new dimension mm -hmm. their their magic behind their playing their performance you know right mm -hmm. well and it sits right next to the jackson guitar ironically mm -hmm. so uh, scott Ian, you are a, right? you're a scott Ian guy yeah i'm i'm a jackson i play jackson guitars too so uh yeah. oh oh the big four of thrash i grew up on the big four you know yeah yeah they're talking about lombardo all that you know you got Slayer, Anthrax, Megadeth, Metallica. Those, you know, there's the four. Okay, buddy. so I got a question for you. We, we I was just uh, talking to a friend about this. If they made the big five, who would be the fifth member of that? Mm, see that? That's controversial. <laughs> With metal yeah. elitists, that's controversial. Testament would be in there. Now, me... Being East Coast a little bit, honestly, at the time, I would put Carnivore or um, Peter Steele. I'm Peter Steele for life, so yeah. Oh wow, wow. yeah, Peter Steele for life. But um, just personal preference, I'd say Testament would be about the closest. Um, yeah, I'd probably say Testament, man. Uh, okay, so I said Testament. My friend said Pantera, which I thought was not groove metal in the eighties, brother. Yeah. That's why, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I said Testament though, so I agree with you, hundred percent. Yeah. So okay, we're agreement on on five. Okay. You yeah, see, yeah, you're from yeah. the LA scene, so you got you got to see this stuff growing, man. Yeah. And, you now LA is a special. Have you been to LA? I have not. I have been. Oh. I bet I've uh, got to uh, be in your marvelous desert in the eastern part of uh, California at one point. But other than that, <laughs> I've been to Washington. I've been to Alaska. I've been all around California. And the only part of California I saw was when I was in, before I went overseas, we practiced in Yell's Desert. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So that's it. That was my California story. So I'm like, can we just go to Jeremy, LA? You gotta, you gotta head out here, man. We got a lot of rock and roll in this town, man. It's oh yeah, it's pretty serious. We, um, I mean, of course, there's the Rainbow and the Rock mm -hmm. and the Whiskey and Sunset Sound and the Sound Factory and, um, but when you come out, we'll go and get dinner and I'll take you to the Rainbow. That's a good place the Rainbow. Go. Yes. Well, some people I've noticed. Have new, moved near me if they're not in LA. I'm 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 an hour from Nashville. Dave Mustaine's oh. now relocated here in Nashville, so it's like I'm getting some of the LA scene down here. So <laughs> that's exactly right, and a lot more than Dave. I mean, Dave Dave's one of yeah a hundred people I can name that moved. Everybody's moving to Nashville. Uh man, Universal South, all this stuff going on, man. You, you notice everything just about is produced down here. You know what I'm saying? Once it gets cut, it goes to goes through Nashville, man. Yeah. It's like it's a it's a, a feeding ground of musicians right now. So, and I'm about an hour away. I, whew, all kinds of people down here, man. So cool. Well, I'll have to hit you up. I'm going to be going to Nashville in the next year, or so I'll hit you up when we're there. Maybe we can meet up in Nashville. Yeah, I'll show you the right places in Nashville. I'll return the favor. Love it, love it, and. Um, the thing I was going to ask you about, um, 
<laughs> last night I noticed you said something about watching TV. You flip it on Star Trek, and right. who do you see? Yourself right. on the yeah, yeah. <laughs> of all episodes, the brothers episode of Star Trek. What was it? Uh, Next generation. Next generation. Next generation. Okay, the brothers episode, and uh, yeah, I just saw that his flipping. I was like, oh man. Day before our interview, he finds himself on TV already. So it's like, all right, here we go. That was a really cool experience. I, I, uh, the Star Trek set was a very happy set. Um, everybody was kind of family like. Mm -hmm. They really liked each other. Um, I just remember just having a, a really great experience when we were doing that. Um, and the cool thing is, I got a pin when we were shooting. You know, one of those pins. Yeah. And um, uh, somebody from the Make-A-Wish Foundation, they were putting together a package for this young man that was sick. And um, I know I donated that to, to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Oh, okay. So that was kind of cool. So I'm I'm pleased about that. Yeah. And uh, let's see. So you had Beauty of the Beast. I was on the show Beating the Beast. That's also got kind of a cult following as well. Oh, yeah. Well, you had Linda Hamilton, Ron Perlman. I mean, Linda come Hamilton, on. Ron and I was the kid. I was Kipper, who was the the leader of the Tunnel Kids. The Tunnel Kids. So um, there were some kids that lived down underground with, you know, the Beast and the community mm -hmm. underground. And I was one of the kids um, on that. That was one of That was one of the first big things that I did. Well, I, I remember it, the show was huge, especially when I was a kid. Um, finally, not, I'm only a few years younger than you, I think. Uh, How old are you? I am, well, I'll be 39 next month, so. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I'm gone. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm about to hit that 4-0, so I'm like, ah, 39's coming. But. 40's a good good decade. I, I'm in my 40s now, and there's something about my understanding of life that I, I found in my forties that I didn't have in my thirties. I think, yeah, I think you're going to like it. I love, I'm, I'm more than welcoming of growing older. Um, I think that getting older is a privilege. Privilege. You know, I like that. Not, every, not everybody gets to grow old. Exactly. You know, so I, I, I think you're going to like it, Jeremy. I got a good feeling. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah. I was about to say, yeah, just a couple years older. Um, now, whenever it came to after you'd grown up a little bit, now you'd kind of lost interest in acting. I mean, just to, and, and, you know, do you had other endeavors, I guess, going on. What was it that really made you go, you know what? Uh, I'm done with this acting gig. You know, what, what, what was the major factors there? You know, I did it from the time I was seven to 17. Mm -hmm. I did a few things in my twenties, but seven to 17 was mm -hmm. really, like, that, that's a long stretch of time when you're a kid. Yes. It really was. And, and I, I just kind of burnt out, uh, you know, going to calls and going mm -hmm. and working I kind of wanted to just have some time to focus on school. Mm -hmm. I wanted to focus on, on um, my, my, I was in a band that was fairly successful in Los Angeles mm -hmm. um, called the Shoe Crackers of Bethlehem. Um, and I wanted to focus in on, you know, school and the band. And, and uh, I had read John Kennedy's book, Profiles and Courage. And mm -hmm. good book thought to myself, you know, I really want to go to college. I really want to experience um, going to college and studying political science mm -hmm. and maybe become a politician. Uh, and so uh, <laughs> at 17, I, I, I quit acting and focused on school, took the SAT, um, and then went to UC San Diego mm -hmm. and studied political science realized that I didn't want to study political science anymore. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it wasn't, it was boring to me, but um, 
I switched to visual arts mm -hmm. and focused in on, on art and film. And, um, you know, post acting, I've had a great life. Oh, well, that's really, good. And, and you said, so right. I think I told you before, man, a lot of people, a lot of kid, children actors in particular, the pressure is there. They got school. They've got, you know, then it, it, you got a full-time job and school and still be a kid. You know, yeah. pe people don't understand how stressful that'd be. I couldn't imagine. And you get fed into drugs and other things. You know what, Corey, you survived this. You made it. The grass was greener on the other side. You know what I'm saying? That That's I, what I happened have, with you. I have to tell you, man, I, I was so lucky because I had really great parents. Mm -hmm. And so they were watching me. They they made sure that I, I kept, you know, everything above ground, you know, and, and they mm -hmm. knew what was going on. Um, and I didn't experience any of the, the drugs or anything that you exactly. hear about. Nothing. I, not, not a thing. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I, I just had no understanding that um, that was kind of the reality for a lot of these people. Right. I didn't. I didn't. Right. Um, you know, it, it, it starts in the home, man. And that, that's just an inspiration period. What, no matter what you do, and I think that is, it starts in the home. You know, yeah. I had good parents too, thank God. You know what I'm saying? But exactly. see, not everybody, not everybody has that. And you see them go through the trials and tribulations, in particular in a high stress environment like you were in. I mean, acting, people don't understand. Acting you you have a lot that comes along with it you know what i'm saying there there's a lot of study but there's a lot of it's it, it you get a tunnel vision at a certain point this is what i'm gonna do but there's all kinds of distractions once you get into that world you know Absolutely. and it, it, like i said grass was greener on the other side for you brother and you're here talking to us because of that yeah and you've had a successful life afterward and like i said we're happy to see you because there's so many that did not make it that far. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, brother. Well, I appreciate that a lot. I, I I'm really lucky and I got really nice friends and, you mm -hmm. know, unfortunately my parents passed away. So, you know, I, my friends have become really important to me. And I realized mm -hmm. when you, when you lose your family, you realize that, you know, your friends are the family that you can choose. Okay. Yes, absolutely. And I saw pictures. You show pictures quite frequently of your your mother and your father. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yes, you were right. Your 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 mother was a very beautiful woman. Oh, thank your, you. Your dad, I can see where you where you, uh, I can see where you get your looks, man. You get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, ah, there he is. Dad and I look a lot alike. We definitely we had a good we had a. a we have a look. There's a certain Danziger look that I mm -hmm. shared with my dad. Um, are you married? Yes. You are. Do you have kids? I have four littles right now. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. So yeah. you know, you know the the importance of being a good parent. Yes, I do. And like I said, uh, but uh, the family I grew up in, I was not in a broken home. My parents were together, yeah. still together this day. So I was fortunate to, enough to have that. Me, I'm on my third marriage, unfortunately. But, you know, <laughs> I, once you go through the military, too, it's kind of part of the process. You go through multiple wives. But uh, yeah. third, what, third's a charm, though, right? Third's a charm, man. Me and her have been together over 10 years. Oh, wow. Wonderful. Got kids. Um, things good. Like I said, that's, everything's post-military now. That's what I consider. Pre, during, post, so. By the way, did you did you listen to Courtney Gaines's band? Yes, they're I have. good. They are awesome, man. He's got this classical style, and I love he's growing out the beard, man. He's got this, yeah. you know, it, it's like ZZ Top with grunge. I, if I can describe <laughs> something, you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, I'm making Funkos for him right now. So uh, oh, cool for his fortieth uh, Malika. So yeah. So we've been in business on that. And, uh, oh, by the way, uh, last, uh, well, it was just two days ago, I had uh, Lord Nelson. You know yeah. who he is? Stuck Mojo. Formerly a Stuck Mojo. Just two days ago, 
I'm making one for him, and I made a deal. Everybody on the show now, you get your own Funko Pop. Oh, is that I, cool? I, I get one of it, you get one of it. So if you want to put it in the background, wow. just going to custom make it and be like, here, does this meet your approval? Does this look like you? Good deal. That's so cool. We'll make it with the resin, send it to you, and then it's like, you want to put your signed copy back there? Hey, this is me. You know what I'm saying? That's so uh, cool, man. That's so cool. All right, that's a great. That's a great thing for your show. I love that. That's a cool kind of um, uh, what do they call it? Like a, a souvenir. Souvenir. Mm-hmm. Well, it's yeah. our appreciation too. You know, because um, you know, like I said I reformatted. I used to be video games and stuff, right? You still see yeah, video game stuff, but um. We'll still probably throw in some video game stuff here to here. I got a bunch of arcade cabinet guys that want to do the show now. So it's like, oh, you're getting some good names. Now I want to do your show. I'm like, I'm like, we'll get to the video games eventually. So I'm your, like, your show, your show is going to grow though, man. It's it's funny, man. You got a nice way of talking to everybody. Um, the Courtney thing was so cool because he was so relaxed. You had him so relaxed. I was just like, this is a no brainer. You got a nice way of doing this. Um, I, I like to make it like a casual conversation, but we get to the point. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We get this stuff out, and I want to ask questions you've never been asked before. So I try to do my research. You know, like Lord Nelson, I hit him with one he never heard before the other day. That was a compliment to me. I was like, I got him with one he wasn't asked on an interview before. And I wanted him to have fun. Usually afterward, I'm like, here, here's my wife. Blah, blah, blah. Um, how'd you like it? You know, give me a, you know, it's like sometimes the lighting will be wrong. I was like, how was the lighting? Did it suck or something? You know, but I like world critique, man. So cool. So cool, man. Well, let me know when you put this out. Let me know. So I'll, I'll share it with all my folks um, for sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's get the word out, man. We've got to keep this growing. Well, definitely. And I definitely want to. Scene four. I said I got I got you working a 3D model right now. It's scene four, kind of just like a little place. Because right. man, I want to support scene four. This is the best art I've seen in years. This is something that spoke to me. So you. you can tell Scott this spoke to me immediately when I when you posted it. I bought it. Oh, I, I, I don't always buy art impulsively. You know that art. It's not always an impulsive buy. This hit me. And then I said, you said it had Scott in on it. I said, oh, it's so Scott in. It's Surgical so precision, you know. I can hear him saying it right now. So, yeah. And, have uh, you met him yet? I have not. Oh, okay. And um, I'm hoping uh, to get him eventually because I, I want to talk about the thing. You'll like him. He's real cool. Real cool in person. He's, he's um, and real smart, you know. I mean, he's, he's a, a good one. He's. Same with Dave Lombardo. I mean, Dave mm-hmm. Lombardo is like this really smart guy. Yeah. Um, asks great questions, um, real thoughtful in his way he listens. Just tremendous. These guys, everybody that we work with at Scene 4, we're lucky because if somebody is a jerk, we don't work with them. So no, I don't all, blame you. All 50 of the people that we've done collections with, every single one of them is a pleasure to to, to do creative with. I mean, really, they're all right. Them. You got Stuart Copeland as well. We got Stuart Copeland, who well. I think is underrated drummer. Hey, oh, he's amazing, isn't he? Oh, he, he's a, he's just underrated. Like I said, you're playing behind Sting, you know, on the bass. It's like how could you not be underrated at a certain point? People are not looking at the drummer at that point, but Stuart, man, the stuff he does, uh, it serves the music so well. You know what I'm saying? It's not all about the fancy, but I love to have the technical drummers. Don't get me wrong, but Absolutely. when you serve the music, that how else is Phil Rudd so good with ACDC? Because right. it fits that groove so well, but nobody right. could drum like that. That's right. Not the most technically proficient, Chad Smith. You got Chad Smith and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. We got Chad. Chad has been a great person to work with. He's so fun and funny. But his drumming, you know, watching him make the art mm-hmm. was so exciting because it's just, he's so dynamic. He's so talented. Um, same with Stuart Copeland. I mean, watching him create, um, you know, 
is just one of the great pleasures I've had in my life. Um, and then, all of these guys are just yeah. incredible. We, but you guys so lucky. You got great artists. You got Joe Satriani. Yep. I mean, get to Joe is on. one of my Joe, uh, getting to know Joe. I've realized that Joe is one of the most thoughtful, intelligent people I think I've ever met in my life. Um, he's become like a hero to me mm -hmm. after we started working together, just because everything he does, he does so well. Um, Perfectionist. You know, there's a saying, um, my, my ex-girlfriend used to say this. She used to say, how you do anything is how you do everything. Mm, and, that's it. I've never heard that. Yeah. And, and Joe is a testament to that because he does everything well. Um, it's just, I mean, it's amazing. It's to a certain standard. It's true. Even the way he writes emails. Even wow. the way he, he takes a meeting. Even the way he does his fine art. Even the way he plays. Even the way he is with asking um, questions about my life or, you know, whoever he's talking to. This is like one of the most thoughtful, um, purposeful, and uh, he's just, I mean, he's like, he's turned into like one of my heroes. Uh, how can he not be, man? But, but I mean, when you hear his guitar licks, though, too, you're like, perfection, you yeah. know? That's right. There's nobody like him. I mean, Steve Vai. Him and Steve Vai, they're kind of like brothers in the thing, but... Steve Vai was actually his student. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. And then, and, he, and then one of them taught Kurt Hammond as well. I believe it was Joe. Was Joe, Joe. Joe. It was like, yeah. Yeah. Joe taught Kirk Hammond. He taught Steve Vai. He taught um, uh, the guy from Primus. Oh, Les? Uh, no, the, the, no, the, the guitarist. Uh, uh, Buckethead, maybe? No, no, no. The guitarist from Primus was. Um, uh, What's his name? Larry LaFond. I yep. Think. See, overshadowed. You got Les Claypool there. It's always overshadowed. You got that big name, but you yeah. got that other guy. And you're like, who is that? You know? Oh, as a guitar. I mean, I I, I love Primus. You love Primus too. Oh, sure. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, gosh, I was just listening to Winona's uh, Brown Bieber the other day. Oh, my gosh. The video is mesmerizing anyway. I think it's a piece of art. You know, him oh, on yeah. doing the the cowboy thing, so, uh, so cool. It, and they're fun to watch. I mean, you sit back watch a Primus video, you could watch them all day. Absolutely. I mean, Ronnie uh, and I used to own a school with Bootsy Collins, and um, mm -hmm. it was an online school called Funk University. And Les Claypool was one of the guest professors, and so we got to I got to meet him and spend you know an hour with him, and it was wow. It was cool. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I bet that was a trip. Oh, he's so cool. He was so cool in person. Um yeah, I, I it was a blast. Let's see, I'm a I'm a fan of avant garde, so you know, hence why well, I listen to Mr. Bungle. And if you listen to Mr. Bungle, I get into John Zorn, who who produced the first one. Love John Zorn, uh, avant garde stuff. Uh it's like there's another band called Polka Dot Cadaver. They're really good. Um just um, a lot of people, like my wife, will sit in there and be like, "What is this?" Mm -hmm. I listen to such eccentric music. I am she's mainstream. I'm all over the place. I've, I've stuff she's never heard of. Yeah. I'm like, you know, back in the Louisiana days, we had a band called Acid Bath. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. It's crazy stuff. People don't even you have to introduce them to. That's you funny. know. And I love those bands. It's those little bands you keep in your pocket. That you know, yeah. Most other people don't know. And then That's when you right. present it, and it's like, what is that? You know. That's right. That's right. You know, um, when when you come out to L.A. because you're going to come out to L.A. Oh, I am. Yeah. Um, I want to take you. I started a company that uh, with my best friend Jesse Krakow, uh, and my cousin Brandon Karopian. We started a tour business that tours Hollywood and gives you the rock and roll history of Hollywood in a tour. Yeah. Um, I've heard about your tours too. You, now you, you do tours. 
I, I don't do the tours. Oh, okay. Um, you promote the tours, right? Is that am I getting in there? I, I own the business with my cousin and my best friend. Okay. So um it's it's called Los Angeles Rock Tours. You can go to Los Angeles Rock Tours.com. Mm-hmm. And you get a two-hour tour in a tricked out Mercedes Sprinter limousine of Hollywood rock history. Um, it runs twice a day from 11 to one and then from two to four. In fact, there's a tour that's just about to start. Um, and it is for guys like us, music mm-hmm. aficionados, it is next level. It's so fun. Um, while you're driving in the, the sprinter, the tour guide is telling you all this deep cut stuff about Hollywood and Los Angeles rock history. And then on the screens, we have these beautiful screens inside. Um, rock and roll legends come on and will embellish the stories or oh, wow. not, not embellish, accentuate the stories. You know, okay. say, hey, you know, you're about to f- pass the old location of the Starwood. Let me tell you about the Starwood. Or, mm-hmm. hey, you're going to hit the Whiskey A Go-Go right now. Yeah. This, well, I remember about the Whiskey A Go-Go, you know. Oh, I want to. It's legendary. Whiskey A Go-Go. I want you to come, man. You, it's on me. When you're coming to LA, I'll I'll pay for your trip. I want you to take it. You'll love I, it. I think my wife would be afraid I'd never return. <laughs> I, I mean, you might I, not. Like, can you tell I'm from Tennessee? <laughs> yes. Like, okay. Well, see, everybody says, Where, "Where's your southern accent?" Like, I don't know. I get that a lot. You got though. a little bit. You got a little bit of it. It it it's embedded a little bit more now since I've been back. Yeah, yeah. I lived on Upper West Coast for a long time, you know, so I still get. So, yeah, maybe I've been betting it back, but yeah, L.A., I want to. No, okay, now that is shared on your Facebook page? Um, I think I, I uh, yeah, it's there. It's it's on there. I, mean, I saw but, it in passing. I saw it yeah. about the, the tours you promoted on there. Yeah, there's 90 things that we show in two and a half hours, or two hours. So the Mm -hmm. tour is two hours and you see 90 different incredible rock and roll locations. It's it's packed. Um, And my my partners have done such an incredible job curating it. It's, I mean, you're learning about the, you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers and about Linda Ronstadt and about Tom Waits and about, Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham, yeah, and Halen and Motley Crue. I mean, it's just so thick. You'll love it. I promise. Oh yeah, I promise. You'll love well, it. Well, I got something for you too. Okay. We were talking, and me and Lord Nelson in particular, we started. Uh, well, I was making. I, we were making a joke. He might do it or not. I said, "What about Lord Nelson does ABBA?" Anyway, we were like, "Who doesn't love ABBA?" And we got in the conversation. 70s man was probably the best era in music, the best combo. Would you agree? I would agree. I would agree. Okay. 70s were really, that's, I mean, that's when Van Halen came out. That's my favorite band in the world. Mm hmm. I love Van Halen. I, I listen to it all the time. But, uh, okay. Van Halen. You know what question's coming up? Dave or Sammy? Is that yeah. the question? Yep. Dave or Sammy. Come on. Man, it's, it's Dave all day long. Dave? Yeah, Dave's a oh. superhero. We agree, but we don't. <laughs> I think we might actually finally disagree here, buddy. Oh, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm me, Sammy. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but no, I love both, of course. I think it was when he started doing the synth- synthesization and the right. keyboard. I think it was the adding of the music, maybe. It was more musical, I guess you could say. He ah. opened his horizon a little bit. But it, it's all into taste. I was about, you know. Um, I have to tell you, though, I, I'm a huge Sammy Hagar Van Halen fan. So right, right. When I say Dave or Sammy, I choose Dave. I, I also. What do you listen to more? Oh, yeah. I love all the Sammy stuff as well. Right. Yeah, not the same way with Dave, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. But the Dave stuff, all that, the, you know, fair warning and women and children first and diver down even. Um, I mean, those records, 
those records excite me the way nothing else does. Right. Exactly. I, I was about to mess with you. I was about to say Gary, but uh, <laughs> well, I'm an extreme fan. So first of all, uh, my favorite guitarist, by the way, is Nuno Bentoncourt. Oh yeah, he's great. Uh, uh, I started playing because of Nuno Bentoncourt. Yeah. First time I heard "Come Out and Play," uh, come yeah, and play. Yeah. I said I want to do this, and I think he's taking the torch from um, Van Halen. From Eddie. It, and I, Eddie was in the session when he wrote that last right the rising song. Oh really? Yes, he was in the session and he said he wanted to Nuno wanted some tips. And Eddie said, There's nothing I can show you. Wow. You know, that's a compliment in itself. It's kind of like, here, son, you got it already, you know? And for Nuno, I mean Nuno, he's the only thing close to Eddie to me. I say Nuno will carry the torch because that that's wow. the last huge guy like that we got. You might yeah. agree. I don't know. I, I you know I don't know about a, a torch with Eddie. I, I think Eddie is. I think Eddie did it better than anybody else, and and uh, but I do know that Nuno is wildly talented. Mm -hmm. um, I really, really admire the way he plays guitar. Uh, Joe Bonamassa, mm -hmm. these are wildly talented guys that are. I mean, it's exciting to know that that there's some talent out there that is legendary, and we're living through it. We're living. It, we're still it. with us. Yeah. Yeah. Have you heard the the Wolfgang Van Halen stuff? Uh, very little. Very little. Okay. Listen to Mammoth. It's it. He's great. He's a great guitar player he's a great drummer he plays all the instruments on the first two records um really really impressive you'd like it oh yeah i've got i've got to check that out um so huge van halen fan now i got of course i got some of the other art over here what else you got we got the now these are from the video game fable okay i love the artist who does in the fable so I got some of those, and one or two of them are signed as well. Let's see. Now, one studio I'm curious about. My favorite actor, a long time ago, I am a Vincent Price. Yes. Kind of yes. sewer. Uh, I'm wondering, there it used to be an art studio down there. Vincent Price is, I believe it, around L.A., perhaps? I didn't know that. Yeah, um... Because he was big into art. That's when I got into art. Because I found out he was into art. And when I was a kid, um, House on Haunted Hill, you know, House of Wax, you know, I wanted to be Vincent Price. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So um, I found out about that. I was curious if you knew about the, uh, the art studio. I don't. My best friend's dad, um, did you have you ever seen Follow the House of Usher? Oh yeah, um, my best friend's dad is Mark Damon. Do you remember Mark Damon? He was the star of it. He was the, yes. the lead in it. Oh my gosh! Yes, yeah. that's my very best friend, John uh, Damon's dad. Oh, his Ed go on post up the pit and the pendulum too. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they don't that's make them like that anymore, man. No, no, real nice people. Good, good family. Yeah. Would you not agree Vincent Price is a underrated legend? Of course. I mean, I, 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 who could make a, fill, a villain be so fun? Absolutely. And it, what a voice. Oh, I, they he rapped in Thriller, you know? <laughs> but uh, That's right, he did. A lot of people forget that. I'm like, Thriller, man. Vincent Price in the background. I'm like. Uh, I'm teaching my kids Vincent Price stuff. I said, you got all these modern stuff? Okay, you got to check out this guy. I let them Absolutely. watch House on Haunted Hill, all of it. Absolutely. And they're fans, you know what I'm saying? It's the same way with the music, though, man. You get you get introduced into Van Halen, stuff like that. And um, speaking of Van Halen, what's your favorite, I know it's going to be hard to categorize this, favorite Van Halen song? Oh, that's a good question. 
So you ask good questions. Let me think. Um, well, actually, it's it's a Van Hagar song, um, and that's the "Feel So Good." You know, "Feel So Good." So yeah, good. that's my favorite Van Halen song. You you can find mine kind of weird. Love What's walks that? in. Love walks in. Oh, love walks in. That's a good one. That's a good it, one. I I don't know what it is. It's the only song like that where it introduces an alien. Yeah, it, it, it's so weird to me. Yet yeah, it's like a love song. Yeah, at like um, a approach of an alien. I, I thought that was just too cool. You know, love walks in is great. Um, you know what Van Halen song I love is "Loss of Control." You know that one? I know that one. Yes, well, that's a Roth song. It's a great song. Um, it reminds Dreams. me. Of, it reminds me a little bit of Queen. Um, Queen. Oh yeah, of, of Stone Cold Crazy. Oh, in Metallica covered that, and that's when I got introduced to that part of Queen. Okay. Uh, yeah, and that was heavy metal back in the day, man. That oh, was Queen. Yeah. Now, Queen, I mean, dude, Queen, Queen, when Queen plays hard, they're the hardest band on the planet. Yeah. I mean, you know, yes, they're death metal and there's thrash and all that, but Queen playing heavy is heavy. Oh, yeah. Um, well, my favorite bands in the 70s, Little Oyster Cult. Ooh, good band. Oh, you got good taste in music, dude. I'm Agents of Fortune. I'm trying. To, oh, by the way, I'm trying to get Albert Richard, drummer, for yeah, you know, him and Joe. I'm trying to get him on the show because uh, that it was my big my my trip into the seventies was uh, cassette tape, right? Yeah. Agents of Fortune. Okay, yeah. opened it up. Not the summer of love, very first song. Not they followed a lot right after that with "Don't Fear the Reaper." I'm just like, and I've described them right. This is the thinking man's metal, you know. Yeah, I and now, see oh, that. and I'll tell you something else. Speaking of that band, when they were writing it, Sandy Perlman and uh, Richard Belzer, you know who he is. You know the old okay. comedian, and he yeah. just passed away. He did lyrics for them. Because they would all hang out together at the time. So a lot of those crazy lyrics written by Richard Belzer, Danny Perlman, who was dating uh, Alan Lanier, the keyboardist on Floyd's Cult. So a lot of those crazy lyrics were oh, Richard written. Belzer? Yes. Check it out. Crazy. I, I, dude, oh, I'm I telling you. That. Yeah. And, I and they love just, Richard Belzer. Yeah, and they just had a series of, of sci-fi writers and stuff at the time that write them, you know. And, you know, Albert Richard himself wrote their song Astronomy, you know, that you hear Metallica redo. And uh, check out the old, like, early 70s uh, Blue Oyster Cult stuff. Oh, Hot Rails of Hell. Man, whew. they had that with the cult. Jerry, are you going to see Metallica on this tour? I, I'm not. I won't be on this one. Now, I was fortunate enough to see them back in 98. I went to Ozfest down here in Nashville when I was only 14. So, yeah, me and my my buddy, David Hansard, who was a guitarist, uh, we got snuck in there, Ozfest, Maj, the whole thing, and Ozfest. And uh, believe it or not, Metallica, they did their own highlight that, show, that night. And... The band that stole the show the night, the night afterward, was Incubus. Oh, yeah. During the science era? Oh. Yeah. People don't realize how heavy Incubus was back in the day. People say, oh, Incubus? I'm like, dude, Brandon and them? Yeah. They would bring it. I mean, it was heavy, crunchy. He'd bring out the bongos. Oh, yeah. And then it was insane. It was like, and it reminded me a lot of Bungle. It's you know you can tell it was inspired, man. But yeah. I, and people are just like Incubus, like the craziest, heaviest. I'm like, man, listen to the Science album, dude. That, woo. absolutely. We we um we do a lot of artwork with Jose, the drummer. Really? And um, we, you're killing years, me, man. We've been working with him since I think 2010. Really? Yeah, and he he's one of the best guys on the planet. Just a nice person, very, very responsible, um, a good guy. 
He's very talented, obviously, with drums, but he's also an amazing visual uh, painter and artist. Um, wow. Yeah, I, can, I can see that with the visuals. Yeah, and, and so is Brandon, the, the singer. He's also a really good artist, too. You're killing me, man. You're going to break me on art. You know that. <laughs> and then you got 311, another we, one of my favorite yes, bands. We work, we work with Chad Sexton a lot. Chad is also wildly creative, super great guy. I mean, oh, man. In fact, Chad was one of the very first people um, that actually, when thinking about it, Chad owned a drum shop with his mom and his brother in Burbank. And mm -hmm. when we had the idea to uh, do the artwork, we went to that drum shop first to see if we could find the special sticks we use. Um, and his mom, Linda, became a very influential person in the making of this kind of art. Wow. Um, she was just very supportive and became a good friend to, to me. And, and um, I just, I love that family. They're great people. The Sextons are great people. Man, just, you, you got all my favorites, man. Uh, we, <laughs> mutual music, I'm telling you, man. I was like, look at all these bands. He's got all my bands on here. Yeah. I said, there's no way. I said, I'm going to go broke. We got to get you, I got to get you a, 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 either a Sexton or a, a, inc a Incubus piece. Go, go to scene4.com and see if there's a, 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 jo, a Jose Pacias piece that you like or mm -hmm. a, a Joe Satriani or a Chad Sexton. Take a look, Jeremy, and, and uh, uh, let me know if there's any of those that you like. I, I guarantee you're going to like the Sexton and the Pacias and the Satriani stuff. They're great. I will get with you afterward on that. <laughs> Well, I'll stop the recording here in a second. Okay. All right, guys, I just wanted to say thank you to Corey Danziger. Man, this guy is full of stories. We've had a great time today. I'm 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 telling you, we gotta bring this guy back on the live show. I'm I'm telling you, I'm gonna bring some of these paintings back up here. We're gonna do a live show. How, how about that, Corey? Sounds great, man. I had a great time, Jeremy. Thanks for being a nice friend to me. Oh, yeah, no problem, man. I, look at the bands you got, man. Killing me. <laughs> killing me hopefully i don't go broke make <laughs> sure you watch my show because i'm gonna be buying a lot of scene four stuff all right <laughs> yeah help me out but guy art you gotta love art all right guys and remember creativity does not end with a period rather a question mark all right guys okay. thank you